So one of the things that we can do now that we're representing polynomials inside of NumPy is let's just say I had this arbitrary graph going on here and I happen to have some uh, data points that just happen to be sort of plotted and I'll kind of speed through this. You know, let's just say I happen to have tons of data points that sort of fit this visualization going on here. Now, visually, we can see that there's a nice little slope going on, and it's pretty uh, visual for us to interpret. But the idea is, how can I represent this or represent the line that this function is, well, presenting? And, you know, again, we can see that it's coming in is not perfect. I'm, I'm not an artist at all. But you can see that, you know, I should see this form of a curve. And there should technically be some type of value and polynomial function associated with this curve. So how could I go about representing that? Well, let's say, for example, again, we pull up our uh, spider. And I'll just arbitrarily take the code that we've done and uh, make some quick changes. So uh, we'll say that this is going to 20 really quickly. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I'm only picking 20 because when it hits the entire screen, but that should give us some idea of our model. Now again, that's just a linear number, 1 to 20. And specifically, that's almost really acting as uh, sort of our, where are you? Sort of as our x axis going on here, as you can see, sort of as this uh, x sort of increments upward, the values are changing on the y axis. And that's specifically what we would want to represent. So I'm going to call that my x axis. And then I'll come in and I'll do sort of the same thing, just with a slight twist uh, to my y numbers. So my numbers, I'll go from 1 to 10, and then now what I'm going to do for sort of the back half of this is I'm actually going to go downward. So starting from 10, going to 1. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, again, if you think about it, that's just me saying uh, we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, well, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, fair enough. That's what my x and y axes are doing. Now, what NumPy happens to have uh, for us is it will do curve fitting. Now, specifically, uh, instead of it working off of our uh, poly one dimension, uh, what I'll say is I'll call this curve. MP dot uh, poly, and instead of it going poly 1D, fit. Poly fit is going to expect specifically three parameters, an X list, a, a, an X range, a Y range, and then a degree of your polynomial. So in our case, we happen to have an X, we happen to have an a Y. Now, if we think about it, my curve that I'm kind of demonstrating is just a simple curve, nothing terribly crazy. It's not doing any crazy loops or you know anything. It's just a simple uh, X squared curve. So in our case, that would mean that it is a uh, second degree polynomial line. Now again, if I uh, just come in, and I'll just show that part for now. If I came in, print curve, not in all caps. If I print this out, what we're seeing is specifically an, a NumPy array that is presenting a polynomial function for our fitted model. So in this case, what we're seeing here is roughly speaking uh, negative 0 0.09 uh, four times x squared uh, plus uh, 1.9 times x to the first power uh, plus negative 1.7 times x to the zeroth power or times 1. And in fact, I can actually uh, do that. I can show, show that as a uh, more visually uh, accurate uh, polynomial function by turning it into a poly 1D uh, function. So again, in our case, np dot poly 1D. Uh, let's see, that would be our curve, our one dimensional curve, not curve, but curve. And the same kind of thing, I'll just come in and instead of printing curve, I'll print poly. 
And so as you can see, sort of what's going on here is now I've got that same value times x to the second power, uh, that same uh, 1.9 times x to the first power, it's just not showing it. Uh, in our case, not plus because it was a negative, uh, but minus 1.7 times x to the zeroth power. Okay, so where do we start to see something? We start to see some ways that we can uh, interpret or uh, in interpret some of the data uh, and what other values might happen. So in our case, if say, for example, uh, let me find out now, instead of, uh, you know, I have one to 20, right? But what if I had 10.5? All right, well, uh, poly 10.5. Again, we can uh, treat this as if it was an actual function. Uh, and so if I run this, what I should see is roughly speaking uh, that if I passed it 10.5, interestingly enough, it's not going all the way to 10, because uh, even though our curve hit 10, you know, our curve didn't fit to 10, it will kind of interpret, oh, well, that's roughly speaking at the 8.6 range. Same kind of thing if I passed it, uh, say, for example, a, I don't know, a, a 1, poly 1, I'll get, roughly speaking, uh, a 0 0.14. So again, if you think about that, that 10.5, very high at sort of almost the peak of our, our value, but the one at the very bottom. And I could bet you if I came in and finally I passed it something like, uh, I don't know, 19.5, uh, just to kind of show this off again, I should imagine that 19.5, well, that 10 was very high and one was very low. If we're fitting that curve, 19.5 should also be very low. And in, in our way, you notice, it happens to be very low as well. And it's a little more than the one, but as you can see, it's producing a value of 1.01. .01.